Right, it's a 1953 Scammell Explorer. It's a general service recovery vehicle which was built for the British Army by Scammell Motors of Watford. And it's got a 15 tonne winch on it and it's got, it can tow up to 15, 20 tonnes on the road, but it will actually, I've actually seen them tow easily 100. It's not a problem for them. Um, it's got a jib on the back for suspend towing. It's got a big petrol engine in it and it's, it's nice, we like it. It's got the original Scammell Meadows petrol engine which they fitted when they were first manufactured because the earlier Scammells had a diesel in it and it wasn't powerful enough when they added the six wheel drive and they wanted more pulling power. So they converted a Meadows diesel engine to a petrol engine because no one made anything that would suit it at the time. I like to keep the petrol engine in there because I think things should be original. I don't think, I mean I know it's difficult running a petrol engine and keep them going but I like to say that you never see diesel spit fires, but it wouldn't be right, would it? You know, so I don't want to put a diesel in it and keep it petrol. Mm -hmm. It's actually been 40 years in the army, but although it was never actually to an army unit, it was at um, the air flight ranges at Lark Hill and um, the fighting vehicle research establishment, which is why it's always had that number. It's never had an army service number because it was never actually a, a unit sent to a unit, if you see what I mean. This is how it was found here the first time I had it running. A bit rusty, and but not everything there. It was all complete. That's why I bought it, because it was all complete. It had good tyres. Everything was on it. New winch rope, new clutch, new brakes. And um, so, and now it's looking like this. And uh, here we have 74 gallons of petrol in there, which is pumped up by that little pump with the letter B on it. Goes round the back, um, into the carburetors the other side. And twin carburetors so that it uses more petrol. They don't do anything else, they just use petrol. And um, collects a lot of tax for the government, as you can see. Um, you should be chains in here, overall chains for the, the back, which um, fit over the wheels for better traction in soft ground, but they're very rare, I haven't got any of them. And um, we've got the snatch block in there for winching. And we've got a winch in the back there. Um, which you can see tucked under there, which 15 ton winch, which allows you to tow virtually anything you want to tow and winch. In the arena the other year here, they had 10 scammels linked together and the front one was pulling them all. So, you know, that's a lot of weight, isn't it? And it was on grass as well, so that's, you know, over 100 tonnes easy for it. But they're not rated at that, they're not supposed to do that. Oh, no, I've heard this story twice now from different people that they took all these one of every vehicle that the British Army had, one lot down to Christmas Island and another lot down in Australia, and they hung atom bombs over top of them and blew them up. And all the men had to stand in a row, and they said, don't look at the flash, turn your heads when the whistle goes. And he said he wasn't going to do that, he said, I'm not doing that, and he got inside a tank. But all the one, other ones who obeyed orders and stood there are all dead now. Every vehicle was just blown to bits. And they're all brand new, they couldn't use old ones, they had to use new ones. And I've heard that story twice now. That, um, you know, it's not a good story really for a television programme, is it? But it's just the sort of stories you hear all the time from people, you know. And you get all sorts of strange stories about one chap was driving one and um, he had a tank on the back whizzing down a hill. And he was only 19 at the time, and you don't care much in 19, are you? And uh, they, someone was pushed starting a car backwards across the traffic lights. And he ends up running, the man went straight underneath. And he sort of, because it's so high, it didn't, you know, he knocked him a bit a bit. And he stood up and uh, he said, you're all right, mate. And he said, well, and the man had a go at him. And he had a go back like you do when you're 19. And just because the boat was standing up looking right, he drove off. And apparently this man then went and camped outside the barracks for two days trying to talk to someone about this incident. And no one would talk to him. They just wouldn't entertain, not like today, you know. They wouldn't even look at it, the army, just didn't entertain. No, it didn't happen, that, that never happened, you know. <laughs> stories like that you hear. Yeah. Well, I used to do off-road motorsport and uh, that got a bit hard work. So I got into these because of their off-road capabilities, which is fantastic. And it just impressed me as an engineering more than being army. The army isn't what I'm interested in, it's more the scammer itself. I did have a couple of problems getting here. Um, 90 degrees in the shade on Tuesday and it uh, made the petrol evaporate a bit and um, we got a lot of backfiring and popping and stopping on hills and uh, 
well, it was exciting. Yeah. You never have a problem with traffic because it's always all behind you. And you never have anything in front of you slowing you down because they're all stuck behind you. So that's nice. Always a clear road, like the old days. <laughs> what do your friends think about you owning something like this? Well, they think I'm fantastic. 